so I'm going to show, uh, this is a, a Marine Corps style multi-cam. I bought these at a uh, surplus store, so I'm not 100% sure if they're authentic Marine Corps. I, I heard they're supposed to be EGA somewhere on these things, and I'm not finding it. They also don't have the USMC stuff on the, uh, on the pockets. But I, I want to address that issue if you don't want to watch that long 10-minute video. And, and a little diatribe I, I did about, uh, you know, military versus civilian clothing. And yes, you can get civilian clothing, it's heavy duty. Uh, reasonable prices, that's arguable. Uh, the Duluth fire hose pants I have under here, those were 70 bucks a pair. Okay, that's, that's not cheap stuff. But here's the thing, if you're in a shit hit the pan situation and you look like you're in the military, uh, there are, there's going to be two groups of people that may be under shoot on site or, or uh, death penalty orders. If you're in the military, uh, don't forget the other parts of your oath uh, include uh, standing your post and obeying lawful orders. And that includes when shit hits a fan. Not, well, shit hits a fan, I'm going to abandon my unit and go home. Uh, National Guard and Reserve might be on that because there's some issues where you can argue the authority of the federal government to mobilize National Guard and Reserve, and it, a lot of the people are basically civilians who have volunteered. However, that varies a lot unit to unit, and it varies a lot individual to individual. But under a serious situation, especially a martial law situation, you have to realize that if you're in uniform, you're going to be expected to follow orders. If you're refusing to follow orders, they very well may have, um, you know, field court martial, drumhead court martial types of situations where you can be executed on the spot for refusing orders. And if you don't have a lot of backup, if you don't have most of the unit backing you up or some real badass guys backing you up, uh, you're going to have problems. And so, rogue military personnel and deserters or something that the martial law side of the house probably has plans for dealing with. And if you look like that, let's say you recently got out of the military, you'll still keep the short haircut, and you thought, well, it's really cool to keep all my uniforms, and I'll tell lies about what unit I'm in if I uh, run across a checkpoint. Realize that if they see somebody they don't know, who is telling lies about what unit they're in, and they may have figured something out at a checkpoint that you're not from their unit, their unit is the designated authority for that area, they may decide that you're a deserter, and they may decide to take you into custody or shoot you on a spot, depending on how severe the situation is. If you've, uh, uh, because there is a whole philosophy of people who want the official guide look, as far as the type of weapons they would carry, things like that, if they think that's government property or can conclude that's government property, the best you might be able to hope for is they'll let you go without your stuff. And changing your story yet again at the checkpoint and saying, no, 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 I got out of the military three years ago, I just kept all my uniforms and this is a semi-auto rifle, uh, that may or may not work well for you, okay, because that's changing the story again. And it doesn't look good at checkpoints. You. If you're in the military and you're watching this video, you've manned a checkpoint at least once in your life. I mean, how are you really going to deal with that type of situation? Some guy comes up or some chick comes up and says, well, I'm a former staff sergeant and so I just decided to put my uniform on for the earthquake or the hurricane or the flood or uh, the terrorist attack down the street. And I, I got to get through this checkpoint. What, what are you going to do? I mean, what are you expected to do? And how would somebody else treat you if your only clothes are the civilian clothes? I mean, I would say this. If you're in a National Guard and you may go with Plan X, I would very seriously consider having some alternate clothing, alternate uniforms. Uh, these Duluth pants are really good because you can, you can put them on and, uh, and at least you're only half in uniform. You'll notice, like, with some of my... Uniform type stuff. I'll wear the pants a heck of a lot more than I wear the shirts these days So a lot of times the pants are a little more faded a little more used and as a civilian You can get away with that as a military person, you know, that's kind of unsat on expect inspection type stuff You know it works if you don't expect to be promoted, but uh, under other circumstances you know, it's got to be matching. It's got to be squared away and if you're looking too squared away 
and you're not in the military and somebody decides that you're a deserter or you're part of a rogue unit, you may be under extra scrutiny or even even an execution order. I mean, it can get that severe. Uh, I, I'll go into another video about how I've, I've dealt with some of those types of situations and, uh, and how those situations dealt with me. And it wasn't pretty. So we'll talk more later, but this is part two of the video and the response to um, MZ Loneliness's thing about wearing uniforms versus civilian clothes and shit hit the fan. But the, the big issue is uh, if you are in uniform, you may be considered either a hostile party, a military deserter, a military impersonator, uh, or a rogue unit, and that may or may not be such a good thing. Now, if you are part of a militia unit or a security unit that has a designated area of authority, designated area of responsibility, and your uniforms are clearly marked, or let's say a law enforcement group, because there's a lot of law enforcement now that are using these types of military uniforms. They'll use the, the, the multi-cams. A lot of times they like to copy special forces when they do that, right? So if they have their own patches and stuff, that's, that's one of the things they can do. And that's another matter, but that also usually they have some pretty large designators, you know, big badge looking patches or, or, or something on their uniform. Not so much metallic badges on BDUs, but uh, you'll see a lot of patches to that effect. And what they'll probably try to do is wear a uniform that is different from whatever any local military units wear. Uh, FBI in the Pacific Northwest, for instance, has gone with brown uh, BDUs, and uh, the uh, BATF, the Bat Fags, I think they're going with OD Green, and uh, and then of course there's there's other other groups that are go with black or dark blue, which is actually kind of fallen out of fashion with law enforcement because they felt there were so many other people that would imitate them. But uh, we'll talk more later.